Chapter 371, A Woman's Heart Using the Cemetery of Death's Transportation Array Han Shao arrived at an desolate area within an underground abyss near Seagate City. After summoning the elite Earth zombie to tunnel to the surface he left the underground abyss and hurriedly headed towards Seagate City. With the kind of power Han Shao had at his fingertips any city's defense was as useful as a paper shield in front of him. He swooped an unseen landing in a deserted corner of Seagate City, after which he made his way casually to the manor Helen had taken as her residence during her first trip. However, only after Han Shao arrived at that place did he notice that Helen and his personal guards had already left Seagate City long ago. He changed headings soon arriving at the Dark Mantle's stronghold at Seagate City. He called for Delante and soon found out that Helen had already swept through the city in a bloody purge. She'd gained complete control of Seagate City. The letter that Han Shao sent last time had already entered Dick's hands. According to Han Shao's commands Bretel City had begun spreading another rumor of how Helen had absolutely never been in an intimate relationship with Han Shao and how the previous rumor about Helen's rape was just an assumption made by his subordinates. Furthermore Bretel City also made a formal statement attesting to the veracity of their new rumor. This was quickly and deliberately spread widely throughout the seven grand duchies. Indeed, that alone convinced a majority of people. However, some narrow-minded people were still as before disbelieving in the authenticity of this message. As this official statement and its accompanying rumors started to spread through the duchies some of the citizens of the Helen duchy who deeply respected their Grand Duke Helen began to believe in her again. Helen originally felt that it was beneath her dignity to come out and testify as to its authenticity in public. But after facing so many impassive faces and thinly veiled contempt she took advantage of the situation to finally stand up to say her piece to the public after Brett Hell City sent out its statement. Helen agreed to an evaluation of her body held by the various nobles of the Helen Duty overseen by several ladies of prestigious virtuous reputation. Three old specialists dispatched by a couple of powerful nobles to examine Helen's body finally confirmed that Helen was indeed a truly intact virgin. After the powerful nobles and ladies published a formal statement together all the citizens completely believed the authenticity of the situation clearing Helen in their eyes. Perhaps because the citizens felt that they had insulted their own Grand Duke's reputation they all began grieving lamenting and even reflecting on their previous actions of despising Helen. After going through this event the citizens of the dukedom began viewing Helen with an unprecedented level of respect and admiration. Taking advantage of her citizens' newfound faith Helen swiftly and decisively rooted out several political enemies in rapid succession completely cleaning her court of conspiring nobles and disloyal aristocrats. After she had finished her blood-spattered massacre there wasn't a single noble left in the entire Helen duchy that ever dared rebel again. At this moment Benedict Sackville who had originally treated Helen with incomparable disdain and indifference immediately sent an ardent letter to Helen. On one side he bitterly and hatefully expressed his remorse. Course. On the other he was like his former self stubbornly starting to pursue Helen again. At the Helen Duchy residence within Seagate City Helen held up the letter that was filled with his touching words of love. She tore the letter into fragments with a cold sneer as she spoke to Firewind by her side I have thoroughly and clearly seen through the true face of Benedict Sackville after this event. What he was pursuing all along was Helen Duchy and never me. Back then when all the citizens and nobles of the Helen Duchy rebelled against me not only did he not extend a hand in help but he even schemed against me in the shadows. Yet now that I've restored my power within Helen Duchy he has once again begun to chase me like an annoying fly. It seems that only the Duchy has ever been the true target of his affections. Firewind had transformed into her human form and so nodded at Helen's words. I told you long ago that Benedict Sackville wasn't a trustworthy person. Politicians they always act for their own benefit. This person's hypocritical behavior makes me feel not I really don't know how you could have willingly cooperated with him before. Helen's tender and beautiful cheeks slightly reddened from Firewind's words. Sister Firewind I was just using him that's all. It was just a thing between nations. Narsen Duchy has the same enemies as me so I was just using him to defeat the enemy. That's all. After pausing for a moment Helen's face became even redder. She hesitated for a moment and asked Firewind somewhat cowardly Sister Firewind what do you think of Brian? 
fire wind blanked momentarily before gritting her teeth with hate. That despicable and baseless person? Without knowing why Helen's heart itched ever so slightly when she heard fire wind call Han Sha Oh a despicable and baseless person. It was as if the depths of her heart was unwilling to hurt anyone vilify Han Sha Oh. Even someone as intimate as her sister fire wind was not an exception. I'm exactly that Brian. Sister fire wind what do you think of him? Because Helen and fire wind had such a close relationship for so many years she naturally didn't rebuke her and even looked expectantly at fire wind. After fire wind had flung out her earlier sentence she shot a glance at Helen and noticed an expectant expression within her eyes. Fire wind had already noticed that Helen didn't have a single bit of her previous resentment. Fire wind sighed in her heart and forced a laugh as she said Helen this Brian is even harder to deal with than Benedict Sackville. I could even even sense a little bit of his filthy thoughts being directed towards you when he was facing Benedict Sackville. Furthermore he wears a hypocritical expression that is completely at odds with his innermost thoughts. However, when I'm together with Brian I'm completely incapable of sensing his heart's mood. He seemed like a bottomless cold pond and unfathomably grim feeling. As for going even deeper that is something I have absolutely no way of prying into. I that man is too powerful. If he wanted to kill us we couldn't even put up a decent fight let alone survive. I know we can't defeat him but I also don't know if your methods are truly the right way of doing things. Firewind knew that Helen had already unconsciously developed feelings for Han Sha Oh. Han Sha Oh indeed, had the ability to attract any woman. However, this type of guy was simply a type of poison for women. If one became addicted then it would be hard to free oneself. However, to the ambitious and exuberant Helen only an equally ambitious kind of tyrannical person was the most suitable for her. Han Sha Oh was exactly this kind of person. Looking at it from Helen's point of view the frighteningly powerful decisive and fierce Han Sha Oh was filled with a deadly attractiveness. If Helen had such a guy constantly supporting her then it wouldn't be a bad thing even if the seven grand duchies warred all year round. Alas this guy schemed way too much. It was clear that he would never be satisfied with just one Helen duchy. When he begins trying to seize all the seven grand duchies fire when didn't know if it would be Helen's good fortune or misfortune to follow him. Sister Firewind I already know what I want. Benedict Sackville can't give me the things I want but I think Brian can. Additionally I don't know why but I've noticed that I can't feel any hatred for him. Perhaps I am just too sentimental. I can hate someone to the bone but I can also transform this hatred into love after some things happened. I. Dot Helen heaved a sigh as her voice became laden with emotion. As Firewind and Helen pondered within the Duke's home a ball of light mist slowly drifted over. After passing the courtyard it rose in spirals before finally descending down towards Helen's window. Right as Helen was about to talk to fire when she noticed a light mist gently appearing and slowly rising in spirals. She couldn't restrain the pleasant surprise in her heart as she rushed to cheerfully say he's here. The fire wind phoenix started staring blankly. Then she started sensing an evil aura slowly filling the room. This aura of necromancy and mnemonic magic on Han Sha Oh's body was some somewhat taboo to fire wind. Thus, seeing the light mist coming fire wind knitted her brows and retreated a couple of steps back increasing the distance between her and the gradually materializing Han Sha Oh. You game? When Helen saw Han Sha Oh calmly appearing she suddenly had an impulse to throw herself onto Han Sha Oh entering his bosom. But the joy on her face was indeed genuine and sincere. Um I was delayed for a few days due to some things. But all is fine. Now that you've seen Seagate City the entire Helen Duchy should be more secure than before correct? Han Sha Oh nodded and smiled. Looking at Helen's sincere and joyous face Han Sha Oh was feeling truly happy in his heart indeed. He was happy that this girl was gradually falling deeper into his snare of love. Helen had rooted out her political enemies in a short time through a bloody perjury consolidating her hold on the Helen Duchy. This sort of decisive move made Han Sha Oh somewhat admire Helen's ability. Thinking about how this woman had ascended to the highest point within Helen Duchy it seemed that she really did have some methods to her name. Seeing that Firewind was also here Helen didn't feel it appropriate to act excessively intimate. So after her initial delight she immediately got down to business so write the thing you mentioned last time, 
How is it going? My people have arrived within Seagate City. Only because I had yet to arrive they'd never dare to get in touch with you. And they are currently right outside. I believe Helen Duchy is completely within your grasp at the moment so I ought to be able to secretly conduct some business deals now right? Han Sha -oh laughingly replied. Seeing that Han Sha -oh was talking Helen took advantage of the situation to give Firewind a meaningful glance. As Helen's face reddened with some shyness she blushed with shame and said to Firewind sister Firewind please invite them in. Seeing Helen's face that seemed like it was surging with a longing for love Firewind sighed in her heart. How would she not know that Helen wanted to send her away so Helen could say some intimate words to Han Sha Oh. Yup I'll be right back. Firewind replied before directly walking headed outside. In her heart she couldn't help but to silently curse Helen for paying more attention to a lover than to a friend. Right after Firewind left Helen immediately read and retreating a few steps back as she looked at Han Sha Oh getting closer with every step. She softly said WH what do you want to do this time? Helen retreated until she was flat against a wall. Leaning against the wooden wall she blushingly said in a low voice this is it the Duke's official residence you had better not not act recklessly. Both of Han Sha Oh's hands suddenly pressed down on the wooden wall on either side of Helen's shoulders. Looking at Helen overcome with panic Han Sha Oh felt an additional feeling of conquest filling him as he beamed straight down at her. The Helen Duchy is completely in your control. According to the agreement shouldn't you be taking the initiative to serve me in bed? Helen suddenly grew frantic as she secretly thought how this scoundrel was actually so shameless to brazenly ask for such a reward. However. It made Helen's heart began pound at an increasingly faster pace as she blushingly pleaded. Give me some more time I am still not prepared. Also I just proved to the people that I'm still pure and innocent. If you immediately take me someone might see through this. Han Sha Oh began having second thoughts after she said this. That would indeed true. If Helen experienced sex for the first time an experienced person could immediately see through her. However. Han Sha Oh was extremely confident in his abilities. He believed he would definitely be able to alter the impression Helen gave to others to the point where it could mask the clues. Fine then. I will once again give you some more time. Han Sha Oh's sudden response came after a moment of thinking. Just enough time for Helen's nervousness to reach its peak. Right as she relaxed Han Sha Oh suddenly laughed mischievously however. Shouldn't I receive some interest first? As soon as those words hit her Helen's heart that had just been pacified suddenly began to race. Bashfully and secretly raising her head to shoot a glance at Han Sha Oh she noticed that a burning passion had started to smolder in Han Sha Oh's eyes. She then hastily lowered her head softly saying WH what do you actually want to do? A kiss. Han Sha Oh laughed. This guy is indeed, still the same a pervert. Helen sighed surreptitiously. However. She wasn't actually mad only somewhat bashful. That's all. Helen hesitated for a moment thinking since he'd agreed to not do that thing it only seemed fair to give him a little benefit. Then her thoughts suddenly became disorderly. She secretly thought in her heart I will be his sooner or later anyways so why does it matter. When her thoughts reached this point Helen closed her eyes raised her head and blushingly waited for the incoming kiss. However. After waiting for a while Helen didn't hear the slightest noise. She opened her eyes her gaze doubtful as she looked at Han Sha Oh who was gazing back at her with a face full of smiles. Pointing at his own lips Han Sha Oh said I want you to take action and kiss me. Th this bastard. He is so shameless. He actually wants me to personally kiss him. Helen's maiden heart started to thump wildly. Even her neck flushed red. The blush started spreading down the rest of her body. She had no idea what to do and bashfully blushed with shame. Hurry up otherwise Firewind and the rest of them will soon be here. If you don't kiss me before they enter then I'll just have to kiss you right in front of them. Han Sha Oh looked down at Helen as he teased her. Helen felt frantic after hearing those words. Picturing what Han Sha Oh said Helen became even more afraid within. She sighed inwardly as she closed her eyes stood on her tiptoes and lightly reached toward Han Sha Oh's big lips with her charming face. Their lips touched and they kissed. Chapter 372 Teacher of the State Strith Home This kiss was destined to be brief due to Firewind's approaching footsteps. 
Han Shao only managed to have a little taste before it ended. He didn't have the chance to probe into Helen's sweet fragrance. Just as Helen was feeling baffled about how Han Shao was not as avaricious as he had been before she also caught wind of Fire Wind's nearing footsteps. After raising her head to look at Han Shao with her limpid eyes she immediately realized that it was not because Han Shao was not avaricious but rather it was because Fire Wind was already here. Before Fire Wind had even arrived Han Han Shao had entered the bedroom to get a sip of tea. On this expedition a couple of merchants from Lancelot Empire had come to Helen City alongside Fabian. Although these merchants were on very good terms with Bretel City's Chamber of Commerce Han Shao would not allow them to discover the relationship between him and Helen. Even Fabian had no clue of the exact circumstances. He had only come because he heard from Dick that this would be a safe trip. Fabian was loyal and devoted to Phoebe. Although his relationship with Han Shao was also extremely strong Phoebe was Fabian's true master. Fabian would always be there to support Han Shao for any other matter. However, if he discovered that Han Shao had an additional woman which happened to be Helen Han Shao was unable to predict how he would respond. If Fabian had honestly reported to Phoebe about Han Shao's playboy-like actions Phoebe would probably create some kind of noisy disturbance due to her jealous nature. When Firewind brought Fabian and the Lancelot Empire's merchants along she had only shot a glance at Helen's face and discovered her lingering sweet blush. After subconsciously pursing her lips Firewind couldn't help but start thinking Askew and blaming Helen giving her an angry eye roll. Attempting to gloss it over Helen coughed due to the awkward atmosphere. She secretly cursed at Han Shao. Only then did she look at Fabian and the merchants with a smile before saying welcome to my Helen Duchy. I believe everyone knew what we would be discussing today before entering this room. Fabian had only heard from Dick that Helen wanted to conduct some secret business deals merchants from the Lancelot Empire. With Fabian's sensitive sense of a profiteer he immediately smelled a great opportunity for profit and gold upon receiving the invitation. Currently as the person in charge of the Helen Duchy Grand Duke Helen had a hundred percent control over the Helen Duchy. With such a character taking the initiative to invite people no matter which merchant group came they would definitely receive ample benefits. Fabian smiled faintly and bowed respectfully. Of course, our Boost Merchant Guild is capable of providing the Helen Duchy with everything it needs. Additionally we will also purchase some goods from your Helen Duchy at a reasonable and fair price. Both of our parties will definitely benefit from such a business transaction. As Helen and Fabian conversed a bodyguard reported from outside the room honored Duke they have arrived. Have them come in. Helen gracefully and elegantly commanded. Shortly after a party of seven walked in. The vibe they Admitted made them seem quite similar to Fabian and his people. Each and every one of them was overweight. The cunning sparkle in their eyes expressed their greedy desire for profit. Honored Grand Duke. After this party of seven entered they all suddenly became even more respectful than the last. After going through this bloody purge they would be hard pressed to find another noble that would dare to revolt against Helen within Helen Duchy. Helen's viciousness was also extensively circulated amongst the nobles and merchants making the merchants even more fearful and apprehensive in their hearts. Um, rise, Helen commanded before introducing Fabian. These are my Helen Duchy's merchants. From now on the business deals between you and my Helen Duchy will be completed through you guys alone. However, you can rest assured, in the future when you are within Helen Duchy's national borders your safety will be completely assured by me. Thank you Sir Duke. This is a kind of business deal that is advantageous to the both of us and will definitely be to everyone's satisfaction. Fabian lightly smiled and said, Helen nodded I just wanted to give both of your parties a proper introduction to each other today make sure you are reassured about working together and to let you know that the business transaction between you will be under my protection. Um, all right then you guys should find somewhere to discuss amongst yourselves the specifics of the deal. I must also beseech you guys to not let anybody know about the business deals going on today. The more secretive you are the better it will be. Rest assured Grand Duke we know what we ought to do. Together Fabian and the Helen Duchy's merchants replied with great sincerity before departing. As the merchants journeyed to their destination they had already begun to discuss the details of their business. Only until after Fabian and the rest left did Hansha O walk 
spoke out from within saying to Helen I reckon that with Lancelot Empire's merchants your goods won't have to pass through Narsen Duchy anymore. The Brute Merchant Alliance is too distant from your Helen Duchy while you also have to deal with Benedict Sackville sticking his nose into your business in the midst of transportation. Your previous business deal with them is inferior to the partnership you will have with Fabian. You brought these merchants over so ardently but is it not because you have an eye on my Helen Duchy's war horses? Question mark Helen shot a glance toward Han Shao as he walked out of the bedroom humping with a bout. Being told off like this Han Shao forced a laugh this has always been a mutually beneficial deal. We will both be able to obtain benefits from each other. After pausing for a moment Han Shao said alright the seeds of internal strife in your Helen Duchy have been weeded out so I believe that I should also leave the Helen Duchy for the time being. I you're leaving already? Helen involuntarily started to feel a sense of disappointment rising within her as she said to Han Shao Helen Duchy actually has a lot of wonders that deserve touring. How about I personally bring you out to have some fun? In any case I shouldn't have too much official business to do in the near future. When Helen heard that Han Shao wanted to leave she felt somewhat reluctant and unwilling. As she had wanted Han Shao to stay in Helen Duchy for a little while longer she couldn't help but make this proposal. Han Shao laughed involuntarily voluntarily look at me am I such a refined person? Helen's expression darkened as she stayed silent for a moment before suddenly saying softly you've just arrived here and haven't even been here for a whole day but you want to leave just like that? You can't even stay for a few days? Not even to accompany me? Helen's slender shapely eyebrows lightly creased as her eyes brimmed with disappointment and sadness. She knew in her heart that Han Shao was not the type of person to tie himself down for a woman. However, for the couple of days after Han Shao had left she didn't know why but she couldn't resist her longing for Han Shao at all. Now that she had luckily encountered Han Shao again she naturally didn't want him to leave so soon. Han Shao silently looked at Hale in the corner of his mouth starting to break into a smile. After hesitating for a moment he said if I stay here for a few days then I won't be able to guarantee that you can continue to maintain your pure and holy image within the Helen Duchy. Ahem ahem. Fire wind dryly coughed twice from afar. She waited until Han Shao and the blushing Helen diverted their attention towards her before before opening her mouth to say I still have some things to attend to so I'll be leaving first. Without waiting for either of the two to speak fire when suddenly stamped her feet before walking straight out the door. Within a blink of an eye she had disappeared without a trace in a truly neat and tidy manner. Helen hatefully glared at Han Shao before rebuking this is all your fault. How could you say such things in front of fire wind? Shrugging his shoulders Han Shao suddenly said it's her that wasn't being tactful. While we were having some alone time together she should have found an excuse to take her leave. Hey hey you will eventually become my woman while as the duke this is also your mansion so the things that I spoke to you about really can't be considered inappropriate. How will that do? Exclamation mark sister Firewind is just like a blood sister to me and she will definitely tease me for this. Helen resentfully faced Han Shao as she shouted in disagreement. She seemed like a young girl who had just tasted love for the first time. Alright alright. I won't mess with you anymore. I actually need to leave now. Han Shao prepared to leave the Helen Duchy. He wanted to go on a trip to the other seven duchies and see if he could find an opportunity to attach his mystical demons to the minds of a couple of the Grand Dukes. Afterwards he would take advantage of the situation to gain control of a few of the Grand Dukes and gradually nibble away at the seven Grand Duchies' power. Are you really going to just leave right now? Helen nipped her lips anxiously looking at Han Shao. After hesitating for a moment she lowered her head blushingly and suggested if you're willing to stay and accompany me for a few days I will agree to anything else as long as you don't truly take me. After saying this Helen's head was nearly buried within her own towering peak. She couldn't help but to secretly curse at herself for being such a despicable person wondering how could she have taken the initiative to yield to Han Shao so quickly but in the end she had said these words aloud and since she'd done so it was yielding to Han Shao in one way or another. Han Shao blanked as his eyes fervently 
immediately looked at the bashful face of Helen Agatis to the citizens of Helen Duchy. His heart had suddenly become incessantly hot with impatience. Standing before him gorgeous beyond measure was the cause of this heat of bashful Helen. She possessed a charm that could seize control of any man's soul causing Han Sha Oh to feel somewhat unable to control himself nearly running amok. All right then I will stay and accompany you for a few days. Han Sha Oh agreed and suddenly held her by the waist to lift her up. Then under Helen's bashful and soft cry Han Sha Oh firmly faced towards Helen's rosy and fragrant lip plundering her mouth deeply. Before Helen secretly left her mansion she had temporarily handed some official business to a trustworthy subordinate. Then Han Sha Oh accompanied Helen and roamed throughout the Helen Duchy for the next two days. Helen Duchy was equivalent to a province within the Lancelot Empire and there were indeed some beautiful sceneries within the several cities. Helen had always been too busy up to now and could never find an occasion to go sightseeing within her own duchy by herself. This time she was seriously exhilarated to travel with Han Sha Oh taking advantage of his existence. Han Sha Oh and Helen were both able to defy gravity and fly through the air. In addition to this Han Sha Oh also had sufficient power to protect Helen and thus, for the purpose of having some alone time together they were naturally heartless and decided to exclude firewind once again. Several famous mountains large rivers and beautiful landscapes of ravines instigated both of them to make full use of the two days and visit everything. Truthfully Han Sha Oh had completely explored Helen's body to the greatest extent at his own convenience within these past two days. Besides the forbidden area of ecstasy every other advantage on Helen's body had been taken by Han Sha Oh. At the start Helen would be reserved and resisted but as Han Sha Oh slowly behaved more intimately with her she gradually let go of herself. Two days later there was no estrangement between the two any longer. A downright torrential waterfall cascaded like a flood torrenting downwards with a myriad of silver streaks. It fell into a deep bottomless cold pond causing droplets of water to splatter like sparkling and translucent crystals. Within the surroundings of the deep and cold pond much lush vegetation grew. A few flower buds released delicate fragrances as various kinds of birds chirped happily dancing through the air. The feeling of spring tinged the air as the area was embellished to the brim with a thriving depiction of life. On the branch of an old towering tree that had leaves and branches that were verdantly big and lush Han Sha Oh embraced Helen and gazed at the beautiful scenery with a smile. He listened as Helen murmured all the different interesting events that had happened during her time within Helen Duchy. For the past two days Helen had relinquished the arrogant and dignified aura that kingdom lords had. She was a dainty and delicate girl who'd fallen in love accompanying Han Sha Oh as much as she liked laughing and smiling with joy. The more she looked at the man in front of her the more satisfied she became. Some kind of feeling that was called contentment slowly but leisurely bubbled up from the bottom of her heart. Snuggling on Han Sha Oh's bosom and slightly adjusting her posture she looked at the scene in front of Han Sha Oh as she said if you want to conquer the seven grand duchies there is one person that you should always keep in your mind. For a moment Han Sha Oh stared blankly. Then he yielded puzzlingly asking who? Strith Holm of Stranglethorn Vale. Helen replied with a grave expression. Who is this person? How come I've never heard of him before? Han Sha Oh became even more puzzled as he confusingly inquired. The current seven grand duchies was once the Imperial Court of Verdun. When the Imperial Court of Verdun was in its golden age it was not at all inferior to your Lancelot Empire. During the days of the Imperial Court of Verdun the teacher of the state was the sacred sword master Strith Holm. Although the Imperial Court of Verdun is no more and has since been divided into the seven grand duchies the former teacher of the state Strith Holm is still living in Stranglethorn Vale. This person should still be living healthily even now. If the seven grand dukes are invaded by foreign enemies and on the verge of being destroyed he will definitely leave Stranglethorn Vale to assist the seven grand dukedoms. Helen gazed at Han Sha Oh as she explained. Hearing such words from Helen Han Sha Oh truly felt extremely astonished. He couldn't help but to investigate the details asking the Imperial Court of Verdun has disappeared for so long. Are you sure this guy is still alive? Nodding her head Helen said so the legends say. Last time when your Lancelot Empire invaded our seven grand duke Dumstrith Holm proved to have a crucial effect. On the surface the seven grand dukes don't have someone at the level of a sacred sword master nor a sacred magus. However, 
the Lancelot Empire received a warning from Stratholme. When they previously invaded our seven grand dukedoms, your Lancelot Empire did not dispatch their sacred sword master nor their sacred magus to attack. When the Imperial Court of Verdun was still present, the teacher of the state Stratholm was precisely the sacred sword master, well renowned throughout the continent. Even though the Imperial Court of Verdun has been the thing of the past for so long, Stratholm is still living healthily even to date. No one knows how powerful he truly is. However, legends say that last time after the teacher of the state Stratholm gave a warning to your Lancelot Empire's powerhouses they truly did not dare to use their sacred magus taboo magic to reverse your Lancelot Empire's losing prospects. Han Shao was aghast as he silently nodded his head. In his heart he firmly remembered this name, Stratholm. Chapter 373 Backlash Han Shao didn't remain in Helen Duchy for long in the end. He stayed for exactly two days just like he'd said. He rushed straight towards Narsen Duchy after separating from Helen and arrived at Duke Benedict Sackville's residence within the night. The former teacher of the state Stratholm of Verdun's imperial court had left a deep and profound impression on Han Shao. Thanks to Helen Han Shao realized that this teacher of the state was still alive. By normal standards when an expert advanced to the level of a sacred magus or swordsman their lifespan would extend accordingly. Stratholm had broken through to be a sacred level of existence a long time ago. Having been a sacred sword master for so long the reclusive Stratholm was most likely still living healthily according to logic. This teacher of the state from the imperial court was also the seven grand duchy sole sacred level existence. If Han Shao wanted to seize the seven grand duchies for himself then this Stratholm would indeed, be a threat. Luckily this person had already secluded himself long ago and Han Shao only needed to make use of his mystical demons and attach them to the grand dukes before slowly turning them into his personal puppets one after another. Han Shao believed that this method would definitely be more dependable than the Lancelot Empire's previous large-scale invasion. Stratholm wouldn't detect anything while staying secluded within Strangle Thorn Vale. Han Shao reckoned that by the time he had completely taken over the seven grand dukedoms in secret his strength would most definitely have improved by another step. At that time Han Shao might even be able to do something about Stratholm even if the latter came. During this night a splendid sight could be seen within Benedict. Sackville's mansion. Within the central courtyard a banquet seemed to be underway as shadows flickered to and fro. Many knights completely clad in armor tightly defended the area. A crystal lantern hung from the ceiling in the main hall while below each and every noble from the Narsen duchy wore formal attire and exuded a graceful bearing. They held wine glasses and conversed cheerfully with each other. Benedict Sackville was naturally the most dazzling figure amongst them. The Narsen duchy nobles surrounded Benedict while constantly trying to pry some information from his mouth in a roundabout and indirect way. The seven grand duchies previous meeting at Sikhamimra Valley had ended on a sour note. When the war had entered its most chaotic state several of the grand duchies had suffered under an assassination attempt. As a result those dukedoms had some weak in their military strength. Narsen duchy was also not an exception as many of their high-ranking generals were assassinated during the battle. Now that Benedict Sackville had returned to the dukedom the first thing he wanted to do was naturally fill the gaps that had occurred due to the loss of their outstanding generals. After hearing this news all the Narsen duchy nobles began recommending their own family's younger generation with utmost of efforts. They hoped their younger generation could fill the gap and become a character wielding true power within Narsen duchy. Benedict Sackville also clearly understood the intentions of these nobles and also understood that it was the perfect moment to recruit. Thus, he was holding this banquet within his mansion intending to understand everyone's thoughts while also gaining some personal benefits. After sending out his mystical demons Han Shao grasped a clear view of the situation within Benedict Sackville's mansion. He knew how many experts were concealed within the mansion and that a magical enchantment had been set up in a particular corner. Nothing could escape his prying eyes. While hiding outside the Duke's mansion Han Shao seemed like a hunter in the night calmly staring at his prey 
and patiently seeking for the best opportunity to send his mystical demons into Benedict Sackville's brain. Although the mystical demons had magical ability trying to insert the demon into someone's brain was not that easy. Firstly Han Shao had to be standing right next to Benedict Sackville. When he began using his demons he would have to promptly act in accordance to the secret demonic method without stopping. If he made even the slightest mistake Benedict Sackville could immediately die a tragic death or even become an idiot an outcome that would clash with Han Shao's wishes. During this intrusion Benedict Sackville could not possess even a single ounce of resistance while his mind had to maintain a state as innocent as a newborn child. Only like this would the mystical demon be prone to successfully invade one's brain. Generally speaking the most perfect timing was during a dream. Thus, Han Shao would only descend next to Benedict Sackville's side when the latter entered deep into a nightmare. Then taking advantage of his muddle-headed state Han Shao would successfully implant the mystical demon right into his brain. Everyone dreamt. However, Dreams were not a nightly occurrence and sometimes a person wouldn't dream for days on end. Han Shao had to wait until Benedict Sackville finally dreamed. Thankfully when a person dreamed they would be sufficiently relaxed towards their surroundings which would allow Han Shao to arrive soundlessly beside his target. Han Shao continued to linger in the vicinity of the Duke's mansion over the next five days. His mystical demons would incessantly monitor Benedict Sackville particularly at night. He remained clueless throughout of this tight surveillance. Benedict Sackville was only been completely exhausted once over the next five days due to his official business on the third day. That day he sank deep into his nightmare because he was excessively tired. However, Benedict Sackville had an incomparably tight protection around his mansion's room on that day. There were experts upon experts protecting the room outside while all sorts of magical warning enchantments were present within this room. That day Han Shao was only certain that he could forcefully charge in and kill Benedict Sackville. He could not guarantee that his mystical demons could intrude into his brain without warning. Han Shao had even carefully considered his gains and losses. In the end he felt that even if he killed Benedict Sackville there would be another noble that would become the new Duke of Narsen Duchy. Rather than wasting time like this he might as well just take control of Benedict Sackville. Precisely because of this Han Shao abandoned his thought of killing Benedict Sackville that night and continued to wait for the next opportunity. On the sixth night, Han Shao unexpectedly noticed through his mystical demons that Benedict Sackville had left his mansion for the first time. While surprised Han Shao used his mystical demons to attentively watch. Benedict Sackville on one hand and silently caught up to him on the other. He intended to see just what Benedict Sackville was up to. Things went contrary to Han Shao's expectations. Instead of going somewhere for official business Benedict Sackville was obviously headed somewhere else. After walking along the streets within Narsen Duchy's northwest city Benedict finally arrived at a serene and elegantly quiet manor from the back door. Twelve mystical demons scattered within the manor. In only a few minutes Han Shao had already discovered the type of place this serene and elegant manor was like. It was like the rose garden that Lawrence had previously brought brought Han Shao to in the northern part of Austin City. This manor was a noble's special venue for licentious activities. This manor was undoubtedly Narsen Duchy's most well-renowned place and it was even a bit bigger than Austin City's Rose Garden. Inside all kinds of atrociously shady business occurred in innumerable fashion. After the twelve mystical demons circled the place Han Shao gained a much deeper familiarity to the licentious and rotten behavior of the nobles. Benedict Sackville was this place's owner. Han Shao was still able to learn of this fact very quickly when he merely used two of his mystical demons to watch Benedict Sackville attentively. As Narsen Duchy's most influential men and as this place's owner Benedict Sackville did not need to waste much of any of his energy while secretly controlling this place. Benedict Sackville first heard a report about current financial affairs in a heavily guarded room. Afterwards he began walking towards a delicately serene and elegant small house with a chuckle. A mother daughter pair were waiting within this house. Han Shao had already seen the, the stunning mother-daughter pair when Benedict Sackville had held a personal banquet in his mansion last time. They were the wife and daughter of Count Delbert. Delbert's wife was past 40. However, 
because she had properly maintained her looks she seemed to be barely 30 years old. As Delbert's wife and her daughter Dealey stood there together they seemed not like a mother and daughter. They seemed more like sisters as their faces glowed with smiles welcoming the person in control of Narsen Duchy Benedict Sackville. Han Sha Oh was stunned through the eyes and ears of the mystical demons. Apparently the mother-daughter pair had served Benedict Sackville before and it was actually with Delbert's approval. It was precisely because of Delbert's encouragement that they were actually standing there. They jointly served Benedict Sackville in bed exchange for the only and youngest son of their family to become a captain knight under Benedict Sackville. After discovering this situation from his mystical demons Han Sha Oh's understanding of the secret and filthy actions of the nobles increased to an even deeper level. Who would have expected that Count Delbert would actually allow his own wife and daughter to serve Benedict Sackville just so his son could advance? While Han Sha Oh felt this was inconceivable he also felt that this had truly opened his eyes as well. This mother-daughter pair were indeed of the highest quality. The mother was seductively mature with ample round curves while the daughter was full of youthful energy possessing a whiff of a charmingly beautiful charm. As the two stood together it was truly a scene for the perverted. The more ethics and taboos were violated the more vigorous a male would become. When a mother-daughter pair simultaneously resolved to serve the same person this was increase the male's vigor by ten times over. Even Han Sha Oh was feeling a restlessness not to mention Benedict Sackville. Han Sha Oh could barely restrain his rod from firing up when imagining this kind of service from a mother-daughter pair. Seeing Delbert's wife continue to smile charmingly while saying some good words for her son Han Sha Oh's eyes felt somewhat glued to her distinctive charm her graceful and mature noble woman look. My god, I can't just let that told thing Benedict Sackville enjoy these benefits. Han Sha Oh secretly gulped a mouth full of saliva as he ruthlessly began thinking. His brain started considering different ideas at the speed of light. Han Sha Oh felt as though he was gradually losing some control over himself as he kept seeing the splendid and heart-throbbing scene. He didn't know if he was about to enter the carnal realm or not but he had this kind of impulsive desire to ruthlessly ravage the women there at any cost. As the charming daughter-female pair continued standing there Han Sha Oh began thinking of the pleasing forbidden situation becoming some Somewhat even more agitated. When Han Sha Oh began thinking of such taboo things, the demonic infant within him suddenly began overflowing with a bizarre power. These strands of power that came from within the demonic infant began releasing at an increasingly faster pace. Han Sha Oh soon found it even harder to control himself as his skin became flushed with a deeper red. Alarmed Han Sha Oh suddenly reacted coming to his senses. The strand of power that came from the mnemonic infant was circulating with a bizarre power that carried an excessively nefarious aura. This kind of aura was the energy that Han Sha Oh had previously absorbed from the dark elf matriarch Adele. What's going on? I had clearly removed the energy residue last time and this aura of nefarious energy should have been already been expelled from my body. How come there's actually strands of this energy still circulating within the mnemonic infant? Exclamation mark. That's not right. Why wasn't there such a dramatic movement last time when I faced Helen? No matter what kind of unusual change the demonic infant underwent Han Sha Oh could still make everything crystal clear with his consciousness. However, when he noticed that the mnemonic infant was rotating rapidly and that the excessively nefarious energy was becoming faster and faster Han Sha Oh felt somewhat puzzled. He knew that he had not entered the carnal realm yet. According to logic when he entered the carnal realm he would perhaps become more lustful but this wasn't just affect his lust but other aspects as well. Could the reason that this strand of excessively nefarious energy became summary due to the absorption of Adele's power? Although Han Sha Oh felt somewhat bewildered he did began to gradually notice that the intense lust within his body was slowly becoming harder to control as the nefarious energy circulated within the, the demonic infant. Han Sha Oh had always done as he would in being a demonic cultivator. Plus he would also never rejected this kind of lust causing him to gradually overflow with the desire to follow his desires. Can't let Benedict Sackville get this benefit. I must think of a plan. While Han Sha Oh ignored his spreading lust his brain was rotating at high speeds. Due 
to the fact that this current place was not Benedict Sackville's mansion the defenses were much more inferior. There were only some personal guards around the elegant and refined room he was in. There weren't any complicated magical enchantments that had been set up inside either. After hesitating for just a moment Han Sha Oh suddenly released a dark and dense fog and took advantage of the situation to slowly float into the room in which Benedict Sackville and Delbert's wife and daughter were in. The three of them were still drinking wine at this point. As Han Sha Oh drifted over he was somewhat unable to control the blue dots of light as they slowly flowed out of his body. The spots of light were not so obvious as Han Sha Oh was shrouded in a dark dense fog. Benedict Sackville and the mother-daughter pair slowly inhaled the blue light through their nose and mouth. All this while not only was Han Sha Oh began gradually entering a blurry-minded state and starting to breath in a coarser way even the mother-daughter pair and Benedict Sackville were as well. Including Han Sha Oh amongst them the four individuals within the room were all shrouded by the bright blue spots of light that contained a nefarious energy which slowly drifted through the air to cover the entire room. As Han Sha Oh accidentally allowed the release of such energy he even became somewhat sober gaining some reason. However, the other three individuals had become completely dull. The two mother-daughter pair that had been sitting together at this moment was first to give in to their heart's desire due to their weak wills. The two began embracing each other and revealing their breasts moaning together. Just as Benedict Sackville suddenly roared in a low voice and attempted to pounce on them with his red eyes the relatively sober Han Sha Oh knocked him out with a stamp of his leg. Then Han Sha Oh pounced on to the completely delirious mother-daughter pair like a beast. A heart to suppress sound suddenly sounded from the room as these two mother-daughter pair arrived together with Han Sha Oh. There was no sense of shame as the two served Han Sha Oh together. On the contrary they served Han Sha Oh with utmost enthused fervor under Han Sha Oh's nefarious power. Dot outside the elegant and refined room the experts that Benedict Sackville had brought with him all began display an expression of envy as they listened to the beautiful high-pitched and suave moaning. They softly and secretly discussed with each other a bit clue to the fact that their Grand Duke had already been knocked out. After a long time the moaning within the room gradually calmed down as the window suddenly opened without wind. A lump of light smoke floated past as Han Sha Oh's entire body disappeared from here like a ghost. The black smoke swiftly floated away under the night. It disappeared without a trace in the blink of an eye. After Han Sha Oh left he flew at high altitudes towards the wilderness while enduring the monstrous changes occurring to his body. He summoned the elite Earth zombie to open up some space within the underground abyss. As Han Sha Oh screamed with agonized howls he took out a transportation array and arrived at the Cemetery of Death. After coupling with Adele and absorbing her energy Han Sha Oh had suddenly received some backlash from the excessively nefarious energy. It only held a small bit of power originally but now it seemed more like boiling water as it flared up within his demonic infant. When the demonic infant the foundation of Han Sha Oh's demonic cultivation was suddenly Lorenz with such a baleful and chaotic core he actually became uncontrollably violent and ferocious. Deep within Han Sha Oh there seemed to be an additional strand of energy that came from a boundless distant place that was penetrating into him. That strand of energy spurred on the energy that Han Sha Oh absorbed from Adele who'd received it from the spider goddess Rose causing Han Sha Oh to feel an enormous amount of pain. Within the cemetery of death Han Sha Oh emitted heart-wrenching screams as his durable body actually split open. Han Sha Oh felt that the foreign energy within him was becoming harder and harder to control. In the end Han Sha Oh mobilized the demon slayer Reg enormous and boundless amount of wrathful power to fight against the power surging within him. Within Han Sha Oh's whole body an enormous amount of pure demonic Yuan energy plus the demon slayer Reg that had absorbed tens of thousands of creatures and various kinds of negative energy combined to form a powerful strike erupted like that of a torrential mountain flood. Following this his inner body became a cruel battlefield as his demonic infant's power and the strength in his demon slayer Reg's souls fought to the death against Adele's leftover power as well as the sun energy that had intruded into his body. Without knowing how much time had passed Han Sha Oh's magical cultivation and demon slayer Reg's power gradually started gaining the advantage. Only after wasting such an endless amount of time did Han Sha Oh finally extinguish without a trace the detrimental energy within him. 
PFT. Within the distant underground world a dark elf was making offerings to the spider goddess rose within a temple. A spider-shaped black temple held a young lady at its center who had suddenly spat out a mouthful of blood. The young lady was facing the spider goddess rose's statue in front of her as she muttered wielding such inexhaustible divine dark power. Why couldn't I even imprison and reduce him to become my captive even with your divine powers? PFT. Another mouthful of blood was spat out as the young lady faces trembled in fear. She frighteningly faced the spider goddess Rose's statue and kowtowed while promptly saying I'm sorry I shouldn't have questioned your might. Because you had to suffer the powerful laws of restriction you indeed couldn't transmit even one in one thousandth of your true power. Your most biased believer wishes to accept punishment from you. As the young lady muttered to herself in a prayer her beautiful skin suddenly split open as blood flew went everywhere. It seemed like an invisible whip had whipped her. Yet the young lady did not dare utter a sound as she continued to sincerely pray in the language of the dark elves. Chapter 374 a philosophy of blasphemy within the cemetery of death Han Shao collapsed in the center of the large-scale transportation array his clothing long since ripped to pieces. His curled up naked body constantly bled through his cuts and broken flesh. The wounds throughout his body were so deep that even his bones were visible. Han Shao's magical yuan circulated silently within his unconscious body. They were like many tiny streams trickling towards his withered meridians moistening them. One after the other they swam towards every nook and cranny within his body bringing a cool and refreshing feeling. While unconscious Han Shao's tattered and wounded body gradually healed at an astonishing rate. Shortly his body had completely recovered to how he was before, with not even a trace of a scar. After his body recovered from this incredible torment it actually seemed even firmer and stronger than before. Because there was no sun nor moon at the cemetery of death how much time had elapsed was also a mystery. As Han Shao leisurely woke up he noticed immediately that he was not suffering from painful cuts all over his body. Instead the cells within his body seemed to be brimming with a surging power. Then moving from his curled posture and standing up with a stretch all of the bones within his body cracked explosively non-stop. After after probing his body with his consciousness Han Shao noticed that the vital organs within his body were still not completely healed. With a thought he manipulated his magical yuan to wrap around them. Waves of bizarre power came pouring into Han Shao's vital organs. Under the nourishment of his yuan power Han Shao's vital organs began recovering faster by a hundredfold. With just a moment's effort the weird feeling within his body disappeared. After a light exhale Han Shao left the cemetery of death and arrived arrived near a torrential waterfall. Under this cascading waterfall Han Shao sat cross-legged on top of the rock experiencing the most turbulent waters. Despite the incomparably violent current that heavily battered Han Shao he stayed completely motionless sitting erect on top of the rock. After another few days Han Shao finally walked off the rock and looked towards the entrance of the underworld. After hesitating a moment he finally started heading towards the cemetery of death. Then a mark suddenly attracted Han Shao's attention. He approached it and took a quick look before clearing the rocks away and extracting a letter from deep within the underground abyss. Han Shao reassembled the message according to a special code before reading the contents of the letter. This letter was most likely sent here through Emily's people after she'd personally written it describing some crucial matters. The current power struggle between the princes had reached a climax within Asin City due to the deteriorating health of the king. This also caused Lawrence's identity to be revealed putting him at a severe disadvantage. Because King Utter Lancelot and the Chancellor of Finance's wife had had an illicit affair resulting in Lawrence the nobles rejected Lawrence. Furthermore even the somewhat less traditional nobles also clearly expressed their opposition against Lawrence's succession to the throne due to his identity. The king was still alive and functioning well at the moment. He was forcefully suppressing the dissension in legitimizing Lawrence. However, the situation was still developing unfavorably. As of now Lawrence's status within Austin City was somewhat awkward as his faction was the weakest among the princes. Seeing His Majesty's health continued to worsen Lawrence felt anxious. He knew that the moment Utter passed away the situation within Austin City would be even harder to control. At that time not only would a bastard of the king not obtain the throne but perhaps even his life would be hard to preserve. Yet while Lawrence was apprehensive experiencing these incomparably 
troublesome and apprehensive day spread Tell City was outshining the other cities. Favorable news kept arriving one after another describing how this waste of a city had suddenly began erupting with a new vibrant energy. Although Han Shao was far from the empire's capital his name continued to resound making him more and more famous. Precisely because of this Lawrence suddenly thought of Han Shao hoping he would return to Asin City and help him. During such a crucial moment Lawrence hoped that while Edward had yet to die he could borrow Han Shao's support to improve the situation. At the very least Lawrence could still make the other princes somewhat more apprehensive with Han Shao in Asin City. Han Shao had already made his decision after he finished reading the contents. The moment he entered the Cemetery of Death a dragon's melodious howl resonated through Throughout the entire cemetery. Fortunately there was an enchantment enveloping the entire cemetery that never dispersed or the sound would have traveled for hundreds of miles. Honorable Master you have finally returned. Gilbert was in his dragon form hovering in the skies but after seeing him he swept directly toward Han Shao. Gilbert's body seemed to have enlarged somewhat while the scales covering his body had become pitch black. He exuded a sinister ancient and desolate feeling. Han Shao knew that this sinister aura came naturally from Gilbert while that ancient and desolate feeling was due to absorbing the green dragon beast's crystal core. After the uproar his enormous body gradually shrank and transformed into a person with coarse black skin. His dark black eyes had an additional hint of otherworldliness to them. However, because his body's sinister aura was too heavy that hint of otherworldliness was completely hidden. Han Shao only shot a glance at Gilbert before immediately sensing a stronger power from Gilbert's body. He asked with a smile how was it? Great, fantastic. That green dragon beast's crystal core had an extraordinarily powerful energy which allowed me to advance to the second level of a super rank magical beast. Additionally I feel that even though I am just at the middle of the second level my current strength is still a extraordinarily powerful. Muahaha, thank you very much for your grace master. Gilbert laughed loudly and heartily his voice brimming with satisfaction. I have received news from the underground world and I believe it will spark your interest a little. Han Shao waited until Gilbert's exuberant laugh subsided before saying in a measured tone. What news? He he I have finally recognized that my decision to follow you master was a correct one. If I didn't follow you master how would I be able to advance to the second level? so quickly, Gilbert clearly understood that all of this was due to Han Shao's favors. Thus, he couldn't help but to start bootlegging. Gilbert who would have thought that you would actually be the grandson of the underground world's dark dragon patriarch. You brat your background is not humble. Han Shao was all smiles as he looked at Gilbert. Gilbert felt taken aback. Han Shao continued that patriarch grandpa of yours seems to be extremely worried about you. He even got the dark elves to scout for a word of you. It seems like you runaway brat is actually quite the favorite. Great master how could you know about these things? Could it be that you've actually entered the underground world's dark dragon city? The astonished Gilbert looked at Han Shao as he puzzledly pushed for answers. Gilbert had never told anyone about his identity. Thus, he believed that there shouldn't be anyone who could know this. He truly felt confused now that he had heard such a statement indicating a clear understanding of his origins from Han Shao. Your dark dragon city has some prisoners. Among them is a group of powerful dark elves from the previous generation. One of them was called Adele. Do you recognize this name, Adele? I seem to have heard of this name however I have never seen her before. Within our dark dragon city there are indeed some fellows imprisoned within that have grossly offended us. However, I just don't have any interest in such things. Master why do you ask? It's precisely because this Adele had made a promise to your grandpa that she would help to find your whereabouts. However, I've already killed her. Not long ago I absorbed the energy on her body. As a result I nearly brought trouble to myself and received a backlash. So I want to ask about things pertaining to Adele. After hearing this from Han Shao Gilbert was extremely surprised. Then he stared into space before saying he heard that this Adele seems to be the former matriarch of the Dark Elf Clan. She can use the faith of the Dark Elves to connect to the evil goddess Rose. As a result she possesses some extraordinarily frightening power in bed. Adele has been imprisoned within Dark Dragon City for many years now and it is said that she is extraordinarily beautiful. Considering the fact that our race has such a lustful temperament we would have already jumped on top of her long ago. However, 
precisely because she can use the power of Rose not a single dark dragon dares to forcefully take her to bed. They fear that she will suddenly use some treacherous methods while under pleasure. Master it is also said that Adele herself is also extraordinarily powerful. I'm afraid that even our clan's second and third ranked dark dragons are not a match for her. It is said that due to her devout faith and Rose Adele can communicate with Rose and acquire her divine energy. Our dark dragon race is deeply afraid that killing her will provoke the anger of that evil goddess. Thus, we have continued to only keep her imprisoned within. Don't tell me that you've truly killed her. I effed her to death. Han Shao calmly replied, Wahaha. Ha. The little lascivious Gilbert became excited as he looked at Han Shao with worship master what happened? Do tell. Hurry and tell your faithful servant the specifics of the situation. Seeing Gilbert suddenly becoming excited right after hearing this Han Shao walloped him angrily. Only then did he describe the things that he had experienced. Finally after describing the previous incident where there was a heart to suppress lust he calmly continued I can guarantee that when I went crazy crazy with less not long ago besides the energy that I had absorbed from Adele there was also an even more tremendous and sinister power within my body. That strand of energy brought with it a bit of aura that shouldn't exist within this plane. If things are as I predict it probably came from the spider goddess Rose. I really don't know how this could have happened. Don't tell me that the fact that I killed Adele was actually discovered. Could there actually be the existence of deities within this world? Listening to Han Shao's description of his experiences Gil Gilbert's previous excitement transformed into rare seriousness. After thinking for a moment he said to Han Shao Master I've heard from Grandpa that this world is not as simple as we think. Even with our dark dragon powers we can only live in the underground world as if we are suffering from some kind of restriction. Even though my grandpa's power is frightening he still can't avoid such restrictions. I can't think of anything else that can actually constrain our race within the underground world besides the universal concept of gods. Knitting his eyebrows tightly Han Shao couldn't help but to raise his head towards the gloomy and deathly still sky of the cemetery of death sunless and moonless all year round. He began thinking of the Church of Light's deity of light the temple knights the holy aura on Kosi's body and the feeling that Han Shao felt from the revelation artifact. Then he thought of the existence of the Calamity Church and the skeletal staff within his own hands. When he first held the skeletal staff he entered an absent-minded state and saw the shadow of a 10,000 meter giant in his mind. Now that Han Shao had gained a faint layer of understanding gradually believing in that kind of imaginary existence of gods. Master perhaps you were really attacked by that spider god just last time. However, it is said that deities cannot truly intervene with the mortal plane, else they would suffer restrictions from the laws of the spatial world. Look even that excessively evil spider goddess cannot do anything to you. This is sufficient proof that even she cannot violate this all-powerful law. There is no need for us to fear her. The dark dragon Gilbert casually consoled Han Shao, silently nodding his head. Han Shao finally recognized how insignificant he was thinking of the giant's presence that emitted an aura from millions and millions of years ago Han Shao couldn't help but to feel some reverence within his heart as he said to Gilbert indeed. We cannot surmise the existence of deities however these deities must be subjected to this spatial world's restrictive powers. Otherwise the moment they descend onto this plane this plane would possibly be turned into ruins. MMN the deities must also be antagonistic towards each other otherwise the Church of Light and the Calamity Church would not wage war for so many years. Gilbert was also agnostic and didn't have any feelings towards them at all. Regardless of whether they were evil or righteous gods he remained as carefree as always seemingly without a care for the world. Han Shao did not think much more about it as he nodded his head all right since you've already evolved to the second level then you should proceed to the Valley of Sunshine and help Trunks. I believe that the Valley of Sunshine will have a large disturbance soon. If you are within the Valley of Sunshine then the Soul Destroyer mercenary will be somewhat more secure. All right you need to pay attention to the matters pertaining to Dark Dragon City. Your grandpa has been constantly looking for you. I think that even if you don't return you should still let someone deliver some news to your grandpa so he won't need to worry. I understand master I think that if my grandpa knew I've already entered the second level he will definitely be extremely happy. When I was in Dark Dragon City that old guy would constantly pressure me to cultivate for the entire day. I've already cultivated or all these years yet I was still at the first level. Now look at me it's been barely any time since I've left yet I've already succeeded in my advancement. This clearly indicates 
indicates that his methods are useless. Gilbert indifferently replied to Hansha, oh seeming wholly unconcerned with his master's words. All right I need to return to Austin City and deal with some matters. However, I will constantly pay attention to the matters within the Valley of Sunshine. Han Sha O informed him. Then after Gilbert left he too took a step into the transportation array. Chapter 375 the Sculpture Lancelot Empire's Austin City Boost Merchant Guild Headquarters Phoebe and Lawrence sat upright sipping tea within an elegant secondary courtyard. Lawrence wore a clouded expression. Although his identity as a prince was already recognized by the king he was still living miserably. In contrast Phoebe who sat opposite from him had a charming appearance that was becoming increasingly natural and elegant. But because she also held that divine weapon Starry Sky she even had a somewhat icily arrogant charm. As Phoebe fondled with the starry sky within her hands unwilling to part with it her thought began uncontrollably floating towards the distant Bretel city. Junior sister your current boost merchant guild is becoming more and more influential thanks to your work. Brian is also like a fish in water in Bretel city. However, my days just aren't so well. I will probably be immediately killed by Charles right after royal father passes away. Did you truly help me deliver my letter to Brian or not? Lawrence looked at the Phoebe in front of him and asked somewhat helplessly. Senior brother it's not like Bretel City doesn't have any of your people. You should be even clearer than me whether Brian is within Bretel City or not. But what you're saying is also true. It's already been so many months. Just why isn't there even the slightest trace of him? Could it be that he's gone to do another evil deed again? Phoebe's long eyelashes fluttered as her pupils sparkled with doubt. Lawrence had dispatched some people to Bretel City before Falk being one of them. Afterwards Lawrence had also arranged some talented politicians to enter Bretel City one after the other. Although these people were currently holding suitable positions within Bretel City they would continue to relay information to Lawrence just like before. From the information they had sent it seemed that Hansha O oh, was really not within Bretel City. Lawrence sighed before suddenly saying to Phoebe I also have the Dark Mantle agents helping me inquire for any information of him. But even until now there has not been even the slightest hint of him at all. What do you think? Could something have happened to him? Phoebe laughs proudly while promptly taking out the divine weapon Starry Sky which emitted a bright and sparkling starlight. She shot a disdainful glance at Lawrence and said he could even kill Kelth the number one Redbud Knight commander out of the continent's ten great knight troops. Furthermore Kelt was also a very powerful dragon rider. Just what kind of mishaps do you think he will face? That fellow is extremely crafty and sinister while his sensitivity is frighteningly sharp. Even if he encounters a dangerous situation he would still be able to escape in advance. He definitely won't have any mishaps. Instead he is definitely doing some evil deeds in secret once again. These words were naturally not spoken to Lawrence but secretly mused within her own heart instead. Lawrence carefully reconsidered and found it reasonable. It wasn't his first day knowing Han Sha Oh so he naturally understood that with Han Sha Oh's personality and strength he would absolutely not indulge in foolish and reckless actions of courage. The moment he noticed that he was in a helpless situation he would always leave immediately in a sorry manner. According to reason no accidents should have occurred to him indeed. As his hands massaged his temples Lawrence said somewhat exhausted junior sister I must have been too anxious lately causing my thoughts to gradually become somewhat chaotic recently. Don't worry. With your relationship with Brian as long as he knows about the current circumstances within Austin City he should come back and help you. Um I have heard that not long ago the seven grand duchies tried to unite and defeat Bretel City. I think Brian has possibly gone to the seven and Grand Duchies to do some secretive things. You needn't worry about it. He will definitely come to find you after he has finished dealing with his matters, Phoebe said comforting Lawrence. She knew that Lawrence had really been forced to the edge by the princes and she naturally understood Lawrence's current feelings. Hopefully he will rush back before my royal father passes away. Besides we also have no clue what's going on with our master. The situation has already reached such a state but he has yet to take a declarative stand. Even I have no idea if he will support me in the end or not. Lawrence complained with a headache. Then he turned to Phoebe June your sister you're our master's most loved disciple. Do you have a clue as to what our master will plan in the end? Phoebe thought for a moment before replying master has always been solely responsible for teaching us various kinds of knowledge. I feel like he wants you to become king relying
relying on your own strength. You should also know our master has always made us work hard for our own goals. He has never once relied on his identity to help us before. Sigh. If I really just rely on my own strength it's basically impossible for me to become king based on the current circumstances. Lawrence seemingly knew about a bit of his master's personality as he couldn't help but to sigh. Although master won't justly and openly help you however he also wouldn't let others bully you. If not for master letting grandpa ball and secretly protect you I'm afraid you would have already been secretly killed by others. This proves that master also cares very much for you. Phoebe continued to console Lawrence. Hearing this Lawrence nodded his head and agreed this is also true. Fortunately Balins was there to help me several times otherwise I would have really have been killed long ago. Phoebe did not continue to speak as she continued to focus on polishing the starry sky that was already clearly shining like a reflective mirror. She treated it as though this sword was Hansha. Oh, when I came over Master wanted me to tell you that you shouldn't depend too heavily on the weapons in your hands. Weapons will forever be dead objects. They might be able to make you a little bit stronger but they won't increase your personal strength. Lawrence stood up and said to Phoebe, Don't worry I have an even higher comprehension towards master's martial skills than you. You had better put more effort into thinking how you can get some additional advantages from your royal father instead, Phoebe said indifferently before continuing to wipe the divine weapon within her hand. When she thought of the fact that this damned guy had still yet to see her after so long she realized that in the end this long distance relationship was definitely not going to work. As Phoebe reminisced and mentally nagged Hansha oh he had already arrived at Austin City. Only after arriving at Austin City did Hansha O oh notice that three months had already passed while he was unconscious and resisting Spider Goddess Rose's power within the Cemetery of Death. During these three months the seven Grand Duchies continued to unceasingly go on campaigns against each other while Bretel City and the Helen Duchy had already conducted numerous secret business deals in secret. Hansha O oh did not make another move towards Narsen Duchy's Benedict Sackville at all. On one hand the opportunity was hard to seek while on the other there were still other more important matters waiting to be done. After returning to Bretel City from Narsen, Duchy Hansha O oh took the necessary materials to refine an elite metal zombie from Jack entered Mount Silk and planted the future elite metal zombie within. Then after handing over some tasks to Jack and the others Hansha O oh left Bretel City passed through Seamus City's transporting array and arrived at Austin City. Because Falk and the other former subordinates of Lawrence had already told Hansha O oh that he wanted to urgently see him Hansha O oh immediately left for Austin City. Knowing Hansha O's oh destination Falk and the rest didn't report to Lawrence about Hansha O's oh appearance because they knew that Hansha O oh would arrive there first. After entering Austin City Hansha O oh hurried towards Fanny's laboratory place first because the teleportation array was near Babylon Academy. Hansha O oh had not seen Fanny for ages and was truly longing for the bright and beautifully moving teacher at the moment. Hansha O oh headed for Babylon Academy under the cover of the dusky night. On the road Hansha O oh avoided some relatively crowded areas and headed towards the necromancy major. The moment Hansha O oh arrived at the long hallway with the sculptures that Jack and him frequently cleaned off he suddenly noticed an extremely familiar looking new sculpture. The finished sculpture was made of pure white white jade and was meticulously carved. This imposingly tall sculpture faced the sky while holding a magical staff and was posturing as if it was chanting a magical chant. Under this new sculpture a glamorous engraving of small characters stated, Brian a graduate of Babylon Academy's Institute of Necromancy, graduated in two years and three months the fastest graduation speed in history. He is currently an Archmage Necromancer and has formerly defeated Great Sword Master Leah Kane. As Han Sha O oh looked at his own sculpture he suddenly assailed with indescribable emotions. When he and Jack had been both wiping these sculptures they had once been filled with ambition and desire to stand amongst these sculptures. But after reminiscing through these times he truly felt a spontaneous pride and satisfaction of attaining his achievements when he truly saw his own sculpture. I never expected. 
I really never expected that one day my own sculpture would be able to stand here and become a motivational model for future generations. Han Shao muttered to himself as he looked at his own sculpture in front of him. It's because of you that new student enrollment in the necromancy major has increased by many folds. He he Fanny has become even more and more busy now. A kind voice sounded from behind Han Shao. Babylon Academy's Dean Emma gradually walked in front of Han Shao. As a space grand mega Simma possessed a peculiar ability of walking through space. Within this region as long as Emma wanted to find someone she could immediately appear in front of that person's face. After the space fluctuated Han Shao immediately knew that Emma had noticed his arrival. When Emma's voice sounded Han Shao was not even a little surprised as he smilingly looked at the all too familiar Dean Emma saying I truly never expected that my sculpture would be able to stand here. He he you already had the qualifications to stand here when you advanced from a magical apprentice to an archmage in three years. Even more so after you graduated from this academy your every action maintained this stunning incredulity. The necromancy major is this academy's weakest major but such a character like you could still emerge from it. It's only natural for your sculpture to be erected. Amy kindly smiled as she walked in front of Han Shao's sculpture and lightly pressed her thumb on the annotation below the sculpture. She had just added another character transforming the symbols of Archmage into Grand Magus. Emma seemed to have already ascertained that Han Shao was a Grand Magus necromancer. 